I think there'll be some new reflections on the meaning of Christmas, precisely because we can't celebrate it like we normally do, but it will still come. So I recently did an interview with five young Catholics from the Saskatoon Diocese and the Bishop. We discussed some of the struggles and some of the blessings of this time in each of our lives. The Diocese has put out a few of these interviews with different groups of people and their experience, so check those out as well. The Bishop asked me to uh, lead this conversation and I was honored. This was the first time I met these youth and we had a great conversation. Stay tuned to the end of this video to hear a powerful reflection that the Bishop shares on uh, entering in this Christmas during this time and how no matter what happens, it will still come. <laughs> Hopefully this video is helpful to you. Uh, here's our conversation. Well, I think uh, it'd be good to just start off with a few introductions, but before we get into that, Bishop, could you start us off with a prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, thank you so much for your blessings. And uh, we know that your blessings are great, even amidst the, the greatest challenges. So we pray for our diocese, our people, our world at this time, uh, that you will bring healing from the pandemic, and that you will uh, uh, bring healing to those who are sick and provide care for the caregivers in a special way. And we pray for our, all of us, our families, our communities, that during, despite the challenges of this time, we may see the, the light and hope that's always there. Bless our interview, may it be a time of sharing and reflection, and we ask this in Christ our Lord, amen. I'm not sure if you guys, any of you know me, but yeah, my name's Jerome Mopitsi. Uh, I'm a young Catholic, and one thing that I believe is that living for God is the greatest adventure. Um, so I think we'll start off with, I'd like to meet you guys. If you would uh, just give a little bit of an introduction, and then uh, one of your favorite things to do. Uh, my name's Obadiah Arthurs. I go to Bethlehem, the high school. Uh, I am the provincial champ for Saskatchewan for wrestling. Oh, I, wow. <laughs> I, I got baptized this summer. Hi, I'm Samuel. Um, I guess one of my main hobbies is working out. Been doing it since last January. Um, and I've been going to the cathedral since it was um, made. So my name is Julia. I'm part of this Vietnamese community of being like a leader, teaching the kids about God and then helping them after like they're growing up, they will be one of us too. So. Yeah, this is like outside of school, this is what I do. Hey, my name is Sydney. Um, I've been going to St. Joe's, I guess, for the past four years. Um, I'm in the French Immersion Program, so I can speak fluently in both English and French. That's kind of cool. And um, yeah, I've been a part of the parish for as long as it's been here. So yeah, it's cool. Wow, well, that's awesome. Okay, well, part of this uh, recording, like Bishop was saying, is to, uh, the main purpose is to bring hope. So the people watching, um, um, this recording in this video, uh, we just want to be able to hear, and I'm curious, uh, to hear kind of how your life is going at this stage and to, uh, to not like sugarcoat it. We don't want to deny the fact that this, uh, this time is actually tough and there's a lot of struggles that can come with it. Um, I've been going through lots of different struggles, even in my spiritual journey, um, just through uh, learning different things um, in the midst of this time where you have to be a little more isolated, uh, obedient to d uh, different rules and regulations that are out there. But uh, I want to be able to hear from you guys and uh, how your life is kind of going at this time. And even you can share some of the struggles, but uh, what are some of the things that have made uh, uh, this time a blessing for you and some of the things that have made this year amazing? Just with the way it started, football season got canceled through my school, but the the uh, Saskatoon minor football club over here actually started up a season for kind of all the schools. So I definitely got to meet a lot more people that I wouldn't have got to meet through just staying in my team in my school. So that was nice to get to make some new friends through that. And that was probably through school, but then uh, I've, I really enjoyed the new system of school. I've got to uh, definitely probably spend a little more time with my teachers one-on-one -on -one just because of the way the uh, block changes and stuff like that. And, I think that's some of the positives that have come out of this. But. Well, I was also in a badminton team. Last year, I got invited to a senior team, but then this year got canceled. So then I didn't get to do any provincial champion for the badminton. So that was kind of sad. 
There's many hard things outside of school, but like about inside of school, it's like mostly fun things now. I don't know why. Yeah. Usually it will be really stressed, but then this year I, I kind of have it like actually fun. I know that I've definitely become a lot more grateful for the things that we do have and just focusing on the things that we still have and not trying to think so much about the things that we, we've lost to COVID. And I think that um, I've become a lot closer with my friends, I think, because we all make efforts to contact each other, to FaceTime regularly, because you don't get to just see them every day or talk in the hallway like you would normally do, like you got to do last year. So. A few things I was recognizing when I reflect on it. Uh, I started a men's group and we would meet together uh, with uh, five different men. Um, sometimes they would switch out depending on who was able to come. But uh, we dive into uh, just a document or uh, a faith reading or we'd watch a few videos and discuss it. We'd have some fun, do an activity together and then just grow together as men. Uh, so that was one thing that I was reflecting. I don't know if I would have started if it wasn't for this uh, uh, this time? I've probably just gotten a lot closer to like my family like I don't know I feel like with when like the world was I guess normal we were always like on the go and everyone was always doing stuff and like me and my sister had activities and my parents were you know out and just I don't know when the whole world stopped we all and I shut down we all kind of just we spent a lot more time together obviously and we I don't know I think we just we got a lot closer we got to know each other on a deeper level and I think it was just I think it was just good for all of us hmm. yeah that's an that's an interesting thing it, it, it's it seems like it's a cliche nowadays where people would say like yeah I get to spend a lot of time with my family but I was reflecting on that and that's what a lot of people say I think because it is just a foundational thing is how important uh, family is and uh, recognizing a lot of people did uh, get to spend and are getting to spend more time with their families now uh, just through uh, having to be with them <laughs> How, how for you guys, I know for me, it's, it's been actually a big blessing in my own uh, faith and my spiritual journey and relationship with the Lord. Uh, how would you say you've grown in your faith uh, throughout this time? I definitely hear a lot of people, whether that be my friends or my family, just saying like, wow, like, why is this happening? Like, obviously, like, that's what we're all asking ourselves, right? Like, why would God, like, let this happen? Or, you know what I mean? And, um, I think it's testing a lot of people's faith and I think that it's really important to just keep in mind that, you know, God does have a plan even if we don't understand it right now. And I think that's just something that you really need to keep in mind and to not like to hold on to that, to not lose your faith. Cause it, you know, it is hard. You're questioning and you don't, you don't understand why. So I think it's easy for people, you know, to turn away from their faith in this time. But I think this is the time when we really need to look deeper into it. That's really good, Sydney. I totally agree. I'm a, I'm a, I like, I always like to know why. And there's been a few times or a few moments where I feel like I just lost it. And I'm like, I don't know why this is happening. Or it's hard to see the greater good in it. And, uh, but yeah, like you're saying, it, it is good to just dive deeper into that faith and to, to lean in even more and to trust. Uh, so that's really good, Sydney. Thanks for that. Yeah, I think it's uh, done a lot definitely for uh, me trust-wise, even just being like, well, you know, things don't happen by accident. Like God's got to, God's got a plan for me. So there's, there's something good going to come out of this. If there has to be here or a lesson to be learned. And, and then another thing is, uh, one of my friends is going through kind of that little class before he gets baptized. So I've just got to join in and we have kind of like a little Bible study. So that's been another really nice thing. That's kind of just, uh, just nice to bounce ideas off of other people and been able to talk to somebody else. Wow. And you said, what, when did you, uh, enter into the Catholic faith and get baptized? Uh, it would have been August 8th, so right before my birthday, so this summer. Oh, wow, summer. August 8th. So you entered in without, like, with having the churches still have a certain limit of people and having to sign up. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, I have been, I've been Protestant, like, I grew up Protestant, and then, uh, and then we kind of just, like, the, the church is like literally out the window if you could see it but it's like right there so then it's that's a catholic church and my grandparents have been going there since i was little and i would go there sometimes and and i think just after uh, a little bit of careful uh nitpicking i've kind of realized that's something i want to or i believe in a little more than protestant so we got uh, baptized into that and we got to we were going to try and actually get it in the see if he would do it in the river baptizes in the river but 
we we uh we did bring a big tub into the church so we got we still got full submersion so that was nice oh wow that's that's amazing so what what led to you wanting to become a catholic was it a certain friend or uh, like you say your grandparents what was uh, kind of one of the main things well it would have been a, uh it was a lot more like it wasn't like somebody i saw there but i think just uh I, I do believe a lot in, in the ideas of Protestant, you know, like self-led kind of learning through the Bible and things like that. But, but just, you can't deny the the outreach that the Catholic church is doing for people. And that, and once I kind of looked past what I thought was the little funny and useless traditions and actually realized what they're for, I, I appreciated that. And I start to uh, understand and, and believe and, and, and find that important now. So. Yeah, I feel like through every trial of my life, I always feel like this is never going to end. I'm never going to get out of it. My life is like awful now, but like I always do get out of it and everything's fine in the end. So it's just like when I do lose faith in God in like those moments of like trial, it just like turns out that it's really fine and I shouldn't have ever lost faith. So I think I just always have to keep that in mind and everyone should and then never lose faith. I have a friend who doesn't like really have faith in Christ. He once asked me, "What do you believe in Christ? Like, you know, you eat the food and like you like you dig for it, you make money for it." And I was like, "Well, you know what? God, He give us like the world. He make us like do work. That's why we have job, and then we need to go out and then do other things." And then he was like well, that's weird because, like, we're the one who makes money and then buy the food. And I was like, well, you know what? He, he have, like, a way opposite what of I thought about the Christ. So I tried telling him, like, more about how Christ gave us more things that we actually imagine. So, yeah, that makes him, like, get into a bit more of the Christ. So, yeah, I help him get into back to the Christ again because before he was Catholic but now he was like the he would just have a different like a way different thought for what Christ is now the one thing that for sure COVID has been doing has been taking away a lot of uh, the things we've been relying on uh, for some people it is uh, different people in their lives or being able to join together as groups or uh, whatever it is that you kind of are placing that in front of the Lord and in front of your faith. Uh, I know for me in my life, I, was, I wasn't recognizing the things I was putting my security in. And then when they're stripped away, it can kind of seem like the ground underneath us is, is gone and we have no foundation. And one thing that uh, the bishop always, uh, I remember last year, a couple of years ago, hit a big theme in a lot of his homilies or in talks he was giving was to, uh, he would tell, he would tell the story of, what it's like when a, um, when a climber ha would have an accident, they would start to um, be scared on the mountain and not and kind of uh, lean back and uh, not lean into the mountain or, or trust the rock beneath their feet. That's what a Bishop would always say. Like you'd say, hey, Bishop, you'd say, trust the rock beneath your feet. Yeah, that's a, a very valuable lesson that I kind of had to learn over and over again myself after a few falls. Yeah, and so relating that to this season, I, I recognized uh, unless the rock beneath our feet is the Lord, and when all these securities that we have uh, are taken away, if we're standing on uh, the rock, which is which is God, um, then uh, He's the only thing that doesn't change, and we we will be able to, no matter the out exterior circumstances or what's going on, we'll still be able to have faith and, and, and trust, and the world won't seem like it's ending because uh, we are standing on solid ground. It also uh, makes me think in, my, in one of my prayer times the other morning, I was, I'm going to the book of Isaiah right now uh, through Advent. And uh, Isaiah 33, uh, this part that really yeah, stuck out to me was, he will be the stability of your times. And that's kind of been a word I've been reflecting on in the past week is stability and, and what uh, causes stability and how to have stability. Um, and it, it brought me back to what Bishop was saying, to like trust the rock beneath your feet and to make sure we're placing our security in God and not, uh, any uh, other sort of thing, whether it is um, uh, our sports. I know for me, even working out, uh, being able to uh, do certain things with physical activities, I put uh, my security in that at times or my identity in that. And when it's gone, 
it seems pretty scary. Uh, would, would you guys say, is there anything that COVID kind of uh, revealed to you different, uh, I guess, securities that you're replacing yourself in? Well, I, a huge, huge part of my life is like athletics and being able to play sports and, and that being taken from me and not getting to have a senior year of, of sports and getting to, you know, actually uh, break some records or, or do something that'll, you know, set my name in stone in the school and I could and not getting that chance is, was really, like, really, really hard. Like, I was in a very dark place, like, just, and it was quite hard to just trust that something good was going to come out of it. I'm, you know, it, not the greatest situation has come out of it, but like a little bit of good, even just getting to go to that uh, Huskies, like kind of training uh, thing that I've been doing. It got canceled, but before I left, the coach kind of talked to me and I got a little bit of a chance and kind of like a more solidified position for like the university. So I probably wouldn't have gotten that if it didn't get canceled, but it's definitely, that was, that was definitely a huge uh, uh, part of my life that uh, was taken away from me. And I think I just had to come back to that uh, absolute trust, like that there, there is something good that's going to come out of this. There, there has to be, there's nothing that he doesn't, uh, he doesn't do things to us for no reason. And there's, there's a reason for why things like this get taken away and, I think one of them was was just to realize that my life isn't founded on athletics, it's founded on him. So. Our classes is only like two for like a month and a half around that. So they're gonna like, usually a class, like, yeah, a class would take about half of the year, but now they're gonna like just shove it in all into one month and a half. So I was just afraid that I might not get good mark. It's not that I will fail, but I might not get good mark because you will have to, like this Friday, I will have like a final and a test on one day. So that would be a bit interesting. <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Maybe not a fear, but maybe something that um, I've had to kind of understand and just come to terms with is the fact that my grades aren't as high as they have been in the past. And I think that I can, I think it's the same thing from, for most people this year. I mean, we haven't been in school for like six months of, you know, our grade 11 year. Um, you know, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, the world's so different and like we are learning things much faster than we have in the past. And maybe that learning is beneficial for some people. I know lots of people where they're like, oh yeah, like I'm doing so much better. Like, you know, it's all, you know, squished together. Like I can remember it so much better, but I'm not the kind of person that can do that. And so I think it's just, it's definitely taken time um, to just get used to the fact that like my marks aren't going to be as high as they were. Like it's not the end of the world. They're not going to be this high in university. It's just something that I'm going to have to get used to. Uh, yeah, I, I totally, it's kind of sometimes hard, even to be honest, when the Bishop was telling me about this whole video thing, he's like, look at the blessings and to see it it kind of was hard for me i was trying to look i was like what what are the good things that come out of it and sometimes we can see small good things and be like yeah that is good but i don't know if it's it's better if it would have been better uh but yeah like you're saying even to trust that uh it's still not in completion like we don't know still the good that uh, can come out of this um but yeah when the bishop told me about this it really caused me to look back in my life or to look back at this time for now and be like oh man, I really have been looking more on um, like the glass half empty uh, type of mentality. And uh, it challenged me to look, okay, what are the good things and to see the glass half full. And it gave me a lot more hope. And we're not, we're never, we're called to never lose hope. And we don't have to lose hope because of the joy of our faith and the joy of the Lord. Uh, so it really, yeah, challenged me to look at um, what are the good things I can go out and do in even in this and even if it's a small thing like I can create a holy moment right now by just going over to my younger sister and I can give her a hug or make her feel loved in some way uh, affirm her encourage her because uh, no matter how small like a little moment is even if it's just a small little holy moment it still has a lot of significance in uh, <laughs> not to make it seem too big but in changing the world in a sense because uh, that just that that's how it starts is just through doing uh, those small kind of acts uh, of love. Well, you know, uh, 
as, as you guys were speaking, I, I was thinking of all these sort of things I, I've learned over the years as I sort of studied to be a priest. I mean, one of them that kind of both made sense but still challenged me is God never makes bad things happen, but he will bless even the worst crisis. And so I, I've seen that happen a lot lately. You know, I, I, um, I, I've heard so many people say, you know, I do not like this, but, but there's, there's, there's new blessings that are happening, even though this is just a really rough time. And people are speaking about some of the things you guys have already mentioned. Um, they've been speaking about kind of focusing on really basic relationships and family or close friends. Um, you know, I live near Mother Teresa's school in a, a little house near the near here, and I didn't meet my neighbors for almost three years because everybody would drive into the garage, and you know, and, and from July on, I started meeting all these people because they're out in the street because they're kind of stuck at home, and I kind of like to do an evening run, and I got to know all my neighbors in a couple of weeks. I never seen them before. And they'd give me a hard time. Are you running again? And I'd go, well, you got to run for your life. You know, anyway. But um, so, um, yeah, there's that. And uh, um, I, I do find uh, people are struggling, though. You know, uh, one of the biggest things I've noticed lately, even more so than in the summer, is in the summer, people said, well, you know, we'll get through this. It'll be a few months. And then the, win the, the fall and then the winter's here. And it's been like, golly, nine, 10 months, and people are getting tried. So all the little supports that people had, like people they would go to or things they would do, they're kind of pulled away as well. So people are kind of more on edge than ever, I, I find now. And um, yeah, so I, I, I just think this is a very difficult and important time for people to kind of name and claim what they're dealing with. Uh, some of this is not very easy. Uh, and God reveals himself through the dark night. So when I was hearing you guys speak about some of the effects of that and things being pulled away, I was uh, kind of thinking, what's God going to show you? Because he's kind of pulling some of these, these things are pulled away. And there's, there's something underneath that that's uh, very true and is the rock beneath your feet, you know. And uh, so blessings as you and I discover the, uh, the constant rock beneath our feet. Yeah, good to hear about some of this. Mm -hmm. And one thing that came to me, Bishop, while you're talking about that, of, uh, and all of us, of how we're having to focus on more just the relationships that uh, are available to us or who we can be with at this time. Uh, and sometimes I, I, I would think it's hard to see the good out of a lot of the, the ministry that's not taking place anymore. And uh, in terms of like the bigger events that are, could happen in the church or uh, and things like that of gathering in bigger groups. But I just kind of recognize as well the beauty of intimate relationship and how important that is in evangelization and in just uh, growing together um, and, and growing closer to the Lord because uh, that's, that's essentially how the Lord did it is he had 12 intimate relationships, right, with the apostles. And just recognizing the power of having more uh, ongoing uh, accompaniment and journeying with uh fewer people but more intimately and how powerful that can be um, rather than just uh, bigger events which are good things but uh, now not being able to do such bigger events uh, to still look at like okay who is in my life that I can be with that I can grow with and learn from and uh, um, also challenge in different ways because uh, the beauty of relationships it's 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 a wonderful thing and the more we dive into them the more we learn about ourselves uh, the more we learn about others and the more we learn about God as well and I think a big thing for this time it can be easy to look at the exterior circumstances look what's happening outside in, in, the, in the world uh, the different regulations that are taking place who's saying what uh, the truth of different situations but just to remember to focus on my relationship with the Lord and that that uh, should be the number one right and uh, a, a reflection that came to me in that was um, when Peter walked on water and he, uh, the Lord called out to him and asked him to walk on the water. And then uh, he had his eyes focused on Christ and he was able to walk on water for a little, a little while. And then when he, he took his eyes off Christ and 
looked around him at the storm and the waves and things that were going on, he started to sink and fall. And uh, I was just kind of recognizing how that in my own life, and this is like on a week to week basis, and sometimes throughout the day, like, <laughs> that's how I'm trying to learn stability, right? That is the word. <laughs> but I'll be focusing on Christ, I'll be uh, having a lot of trust, a lot of faith. And then before you know it, I'm like, oh, no, and then I focus on exteriors, and I start to lose um, and I focus on Christ and, and start to sink and fall. And then going back to, to that is to, again, yeah, trust the rock beneath my feet and keep my eyes focused on Christ and keep um, my focus being on my own relationship with God. My dad kind of does some, whatever, he reads every morning, reads the Bible, and sometimes he tells me about it. But I've been getting into it a lot more, like just trying to get on the daily, and you know, just at night or in the mornings whenever I'm kind of just sitting there. And, and even just, this is totally out of the blue, but, uh, he was reading uh, Matthews and he showed me this uh, verse and I thought it was really interesting just with the time that we're in. And is it cool if I... Yeah, go ahead for sure. So this, uh, this is Matthew uh, 10, 28. So it says, uh, and do not fear those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Uh, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body, soul, uh, body and soul in hell. So I just thought it was interesting just because I think lately with... Uh, just all the things that have done uh, just with COVID and, you know, church shutdowns, like we've actually lost a lot of that, uh, I think importance, like that we've lost a lot of relationship with God that uh, people aren't getting back. And I don't think people realize that, you know, they COVID can kill the body, but you know, having no relationship with God kills the soul. And that's much more important. Like, and I think, not that I'm saying everything should go out of the window, but I think we live in a lot of uh, just fear. And that's very sad because it, it is important. Like it, the soul is, I would say, you know, tenfold more important than the body. It's, it's an important part of our lives. And I think lately we've been focusing a lot on, you know, well, I mean, we, there's consideration coming in, you know, we have to keep people safe and I, I'm totally behind that. And I want to keep everyone safe around me, but, there's just not some things like even in my church, we wear masks, but now we're not allowed to sing, even though we wear masks and just random things. And a lot of things of people being, I think, afraid of, you know, it's, it's hard because we have to follow the rules, but it's, it's a very important thing that I think we're missing out on and losing a lot of, which is hard, but it's just the time that we're in and we have to follow the rules to be good stewards of, the authority that has been put in front of us but for me uh you know i think one of the big learnings is you know what is amidst all the important things that i do or i think i do as a bishop you know what's the the most important thing for me to do as a as a as a as a as a, as a, as a christian man uh growing in my faith um being uh you know uh, loving and serving my brothers and sisters and how does that get real practical and real um, I noticed that Pope Francis, in the latest encyclical, uh, Fratelli Tutti, underscores and says he looks at all these global problems, the importance of the local. You know, we need to be local people caring for our brother and sister and the stranger. You know, if we simply default to these big mega solutions, but we're not living the good ourselves in some basic ways, we won't be fully human and we won't deal with fundamental issues. So a COVID is it's interesting for Telly Tutti came out during COVID. I don't think that was by design, but it did. And uh, so that's challenging me as well. So the whole way of self-emptying and COVID has stripped a lot of things away, um, but the spiritual hunger only increases. And uh, I've got to meet it. We've got to meet it. Uh, even when there's all these restrictions and so forth. And I think God will need it with us. I often reflect on that because the Lord doesn't want us to live in fear. Like, correct, Bishop? No. And uh, it is easy to just see, um, to see myself and, and to try and learn to recognize when I'm making decisions out of fear or when I'm making decisions uh, in trust of the Lord and in faith. And there's like a big contrast between the two, but sometimes they can look like similar. I think it's really helpful just knowing like that other people around you feel the same way. Like I know that I spend a lot of time talking with my cousin um, 
yeah, we we're best friends. Like we go to school together and we work together. And um, we always, we often talk about how, you know, like it's not, you're not the only one like healing this. And I know that everyone's probably tired of hearing like we're all in the same boat, but it's true. I mean, I guess when it comes to our grades, we're both like high achievers. And when we don't meet that expectation that we set for ourselves, I feel like it's hard, but I think that it's, it's easier when you know that you have someone else who feels the same way as you do. So you're not just like, you know, you feel less alone, I guess. Oh, that, that is so good. Cause <laughs> I, I totally agree. I, I was feeling like that for a while. I was like, does anybody else feel like this? And, and having, just being able to go and have conversations with people and to just talk about it more often uh, and to, to not talk about it in like a drastic way of, ah, I'm like losing hope or I just can't, I can't do anything, but just to like, just talk about it and have a good conversation that are honest and open with how we're feeling. Uh, and then, but conversations that also lead towards hope and to lead towards the next good that we can do. You know, fears come at you from different places in dark times and they don't go, they don't go away. They keep coming until you face them. And I, and I don't mean to be bravado. I mean, but you face them with God and the support of people God sends you. And you guys have spoken to that a bit. And I think naming and claiming fears, you know, as well as, you know, faults and failings, we do that, you know, in confession and so forth, is a really healthy and important thing. Because otherwise fears can blindside us or they can manifest themselves in different ways. So, uh, I, I, I think it's good to kind of stop and face, you know, and again, I'm not that any of us is superman or superwoman, but we have uh, Christ's strength um, and we have the strength of the people God sends us to help us learn from these things and get beyond them. And so I think COVID is revealing a new layer of some fears for people. And I hope uh, we can help each other to confront those and work through them. Yeah, and I feel like for like fear, once you like do find the problem, I feel like a really important part is to like accept it, which is maybe sort of like Obadiah was saying. Like, it's kind of like the quote that I really like. It's like, courage isn't the absence of fear, it's doing things in spite of it. So I think with all the stuff going around with COVID, you just kind of have to like try and see like the good parts of it and just like live your life. Yeah, that's a great quote, Sam. I totally agree. And, and that's, uh, yeah, a big thing is kind of accepting it. It's like, okay, there is this uh, fear I have. And as a man, I often can deny or want to just deny. I'm like, nah, it doesn't bother me. I, I, I can take that, you know. <laughs> but to just know, recognizing, okay, no, this is a fear in my life. or uh, and, and then to bring it into the light because that's how the enemy works is he wants to keep it hidden in the darkness. And a lot of the fears that we have are just lies that we're believing. So once we bring it into the light and, and kind of accept it in a sense uh, and to see, okay, it's in the light, it, it seems to not be such a big deal anymore. And we're able to uh, just address it and uh, to bring it to the Lord and uh, allow him to do his work in our lives. You know, one of the, 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 the last kind of things I was reflecting on and wondering for you guys is that, you know, we're about to celebrate the anniversary of the Savior's birth. And he's not just the Savior of the time. And he's not just the Savior of Catholics and Christians. He's the Savior of the world. And so, I mean, wow, like, what does that really, really, really mean? You know, and, uh, and so, I, you know, and I think Chris, people are going to think a lot about this because they can't celebrate Christmas like, like usual. And all the, the things that go with Christmas are kind of stripped away. I mean, now, you know, and, uh, you know, certainly understand it, and even though, but it's difficult, you know, a family of five or greater, you know, that's it, you know, that's, that's who you're supposed to connect with over Christmas. So uh, I, I guess the, 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 I think Christmas is a great opportunity in the crisis to remind us that um, all these things can be stripped away. All these things can be eroded away. All these things can seemingly stop. But you know what? Christmas is coming. I mean, even the Grinch tried to steal it and he couldn't, you know. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, the greatest conversion for him was, it comes. And it's not about what we do. And it's not about, you know, these disasters that happens. It's the gift of God coming into our lives to bring light and hope and blessing. So I, I think... Christmas is like a great teaching and a great support during COVID 
and uh, I think there'll be some new reflections on the meaning of Christmas, precisely because we can't celebrate it like we normally do. But it will still come, you know. So I'm, I, I, that's kind of what's on my heart uh, at this time right now. Okay, well, Bishop, can you end us off in a prayer? I opened with prayer. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe Jerome, you could close us in prayer. Okay, sure. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to be uh, more aware of your presence uh, with us and prepare our hearts for your coming this Christmas. Mother Mary, also guide us towards your Son and uh, prepare our hearts as well for uh, the coming of the Lord. Uh, we thank you for the many blessings and the gifts that you have given us. Help us to um, recognize them in our lives and help us to also um, to address the fears that we have and to uh, recognize the lies that we're believing and to take them to you and to remember to focus on you um, and our relationship with you. Help us to have a greater hope and uh, to place our security on you and to trust um, you as the rock beneath our feet. Uh, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thanks so much, guys. This has been actually really awesome. To Take care. Bye for now. Okay, well, hopefully this conversation was helpful for you. Hopefully it brought you some hope. And I encourage you guys to have uh, more good conversations like this. Talk uh, with other people about your experience uh, and have uh, dialogues and discussions that lead to hope and uh, lead to the next good uh, thing we can do. Well, thank you so much to the diocese and to Bishop for initiating this and to uh, asking me to be a part of this. I really enjoyed it. Well, Merry Christmas and God bless.